Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome to the KW Command 66 Day Challenge 5.0, Day 33. So for the past few days, we have been talking about opportunities and specifically with regards to documents. Today is no different. We are going to get back into our opportunities, and today I'm going to introduce you to DocuSign. So this will be a multiple day um, series around using DocuSign within the opportunities menu. So for any reason you're using something outside of DocuSign, you can skip forward, but DocuSign is uh, my recommended and preferred uh, e-signature program used within command. So that's what we're gonna talk about today, introducing you to DocuSign. So the first step essentially is to go into your settings menu to make sure that DocuSign is connected. So I can go into the drop down next to my name here, choose settings, and I can scroll down and I'm looking for applications and DocuSign. So here it is at the very top and you can see right now it is connected. However, if for any reason your account was showing up as disconnected, you would scroll down, right? You would find DocuSign underneath digital signature and transactions. You would wanna click on connect account. And this essentially is gonna go through the process of either logging into your account or setting up a brand new one for you. Now it's important to note that if you have used DocuSign in the past with an email address, it is not possible to connect that account to your KW command. So you're gonna to want to connect it to a new email, preferably your at kw.com email address, if that's the one already associated with your KW DocuSign account. Uh, if you're having any issues here, you can go to answers.kw.com and there are help articles there around DocuSign. You can also reach out to your market center tech trainer. Uh, but I already have a DocuSign account associated with this email. So I can just click on login here. And there's my email. Again, I'm just gonna log into DocuSign. Because this is the email associated with my Keller Williams DocuSign account, once I log into it, it'll automatically make the connection inside of command, and you'll see that our current status is now connected. Now we can transition to the opportunity that we've been working on and begin connecting that opportunity to DocuSign. So we're gonna go back into our opportunity that we've been working on. So that's Donald Duck here at Quack Lane. We'll click on the name of the opportunity to open it. We're gonna to come to the Documents tab and you'll now see on the top right, this button was always here. However, I have the ability to start a transaction and I can decide if I have both .loop and DocuSign connected, which one I want to use. In this case, we're gonna use DocuSign. Once we do that, it's gonna actually ask us to sign into our DocuSign account. And once we do, it will create a brand new DocuSign room for us and the DocuSign room will be titled the exact same that the opportunity was titled. So that room is automatically created and the name matches the opportunity. You can see the name. In addition, when we go to details, you'll see this is a listing based opportunity. And so it automatically brought in the seller's name and email. In this case, I don't think I had a phone number for Donald, so it didn't bring the phone number over. And yet if I did, it would have brought the phone number over. And you can see then that we've got the listing agent information, which here is all of my information that was also brought over into this transaction. Now, if for any reason we wanna go back in and let's say we need to add Donald's phone number, we would just click on the edit button here at the top I could come in and add Donald's cell phone number. And then I would just need to remember to click on save here at the bottom. That would then add Donald's information. In addition, if we have a second seller, we would bring in that information. We could click on edit, fill out the information. If there's any additional information that we would like to bring in, you can also bring in, you can see it actually brought in the address because we had the address associated with the opportunity. But if you have any additional information that you would like to bring in, I do have the expected close date brought over as well. Um, but you can click on edit and it'll open up any of these boxes that you want to then fill out. Now that we've got all of that information saved, we can come over to the documents tab 
and this is where we want to start bringing in the actual documents that we're going to use for this specific opportunity. And so in that case, we would click on the Add button, and you can see there's several different ways that we can bring in these documents. So if you're using ZipForm, you can add that on. We're not going to train on ZipForm today. I do have some other videos on ZipForm training. You can find those on my YouTube channel, but we're not going to uh, focus on that during this challenge. I can bring in documents from my computer or from Google, Drop, Google Drive, Dropbox, or Box. Most of the time, though, we will be bringing in actual DocuSign forms. So if we click on DocuSign forms, you're going to see that we then have form groups here on the left hand side and this has changed slightly from how you view these in the past challenges and then you have DocuSign form libraries so here are form libraries here are form groups now you're going to see that I have a ton of libraries and that's because I'm associated with multiple market centers but typically you're probably only associated with one market center so you would have only one maybe a couple of libraries in addition, I have a whole lot of groups, and that's because I'm associated with a whole lot of market centers. But if you only have one market center that you're associated with, you would just have the form groups that they had created for you and your use. And typically those form groups are around the type of transactions you would be involved in. So you can see in this case, some of the market centers have just named them buyer, some of them have named buyer side, some named a broker, my buyer purchasing, and then you know you can't even see what the rest is. So you'll find the form groups that work correctly for you. Let's just say it was buyer residential. So when I open this form group, you can see here are all of the documents that I might potentially need for a buyer-based residential transaction. We could do the same with listing. So you can see some of the offices have actually put in their uh, their office number, which I definitely appreciate that. Um, and then sometimes it's just listing or listing for lease, listing for sale, and the documents you might need there. So it really depends on your market center and how they're building out the compliance. You can even see in this case, these listings are actually, these documents are actually required uh, for the market center. But what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna go in we're going to find the documents that we need. Let's just go into this one. We'll say, okay, we need the IABS. We need the uh, listing agreement. We need the uh, seller's authorization, seller's disclosure. Let's bring all of these in. We can click on add selected. So that essentially will bring in the documents. Tomorrow, we're going to dive further into the actual documents, how to start filling them out. And then we'll move forward with our DocuSign training from there. But today, essentially, we just made sure that DocuSign was connected in our settings menu. We connected this transaction to DocuSign, and then we went in and checked out the room that was created and added several documents to that specific room. Tomorrow, again, we'll dive into the creation and formatting and filling out of these documents. I'll look forward to seeing you then. Hope you're having a great afternoon, guys.